Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Star Wars 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at none other than the Snowtrooper Commander from Empire Strikes Back. Now back in the day this guy was released in limited quantities, in fact they only made 1000 units worldwide. Now I missed out back then because I wasn't crazy into collecting troopers like I am today, but thankfully from time to time Toys Wonderland has these older releases on their site, so I stumbled across this guy and I had to pick him up. I will include the link in the description below, but unfortunately I think this guy is now sold out. I may very well have gotten the last one, but keep an eye out on the site in case they get any more. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and it's done in the usual Star Wars style. An image of the figure himself front and center, his name down below and then another image on the back of the box. You can flip open the the front cover to reveal the figure himself and you guessed it another image but we're not really here to dissect the box art we're more here to take a look at the figure inside now i personally am a massive fan of the snow trooper design so i don't exactly know why i never picked this guy up originally i have both versions of the hot toys snow troopers the one from battlefront and the one from empire strikes back this guy is going to go very nicely with them on the hot shelf. But for now, yeah, first in hand impressions are relatively positive. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of the accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look and everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now, starting off with the display base first, it's incredibly boring. It's hexagonal, it's black up on top. This is 100% brand new pristine, but you can already see there are a ton of scratches and marks on the surface. You do have a regular crotch grabber up on top and Star Wars printed down below. You can also see this says 2015 where this figure actually was released in 2018, so I'm not sure why back in the day they were reusing old display bases. You also get an E11, which I think looks great. I have no problems with this whatsoever. I do like the subtle brass paint applications to the site up on top. It breaks up the overall black color scheme. You also have a stock that you can swing back, lock into place, and extend. It's a unique design that I don't think we have ever seen in universe. It's more a carryover from the real world gun that the E11 was based off. You also get a DL44. This is the accurate Empire Strikes Back design for it, and there is a ton of silver dry brushing on the surface. Maybe too much. This though I'll just be having in the holster on his side so it's not going to be the biggest attention grabber. The E11 will be the one I'll have him holding. You also get a bunch of gloved hands, but the cool thing is every hand has its own wrist peg. I wish that Hot Toys would do that nowadays. This is one of the best features that I think this company has ever implemented. You also have a ton of texture on the outside of the gloves. They look like leathery style gloves. You also have this little communicator piece on the back and that is on all of the interchangeable gloves for the left hand. What we are going to do now though is get the snow trooper commander himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And this guy is some classic original trilogy goodness in action figure format. 
I am so happy that I decided to pick him up, and spoiler alert, I've also picked up the 8080 driver, so expect a retro review on him sometime in the near future. This figure just speaks to me. Now there are a couple of common complaints that we will address in just a second, but overall, the texture of the outfit, the sculpt of the armor, and the presence, because this guy is on a slightly taller body, it's all undeniable. As I said, I'm super glad I picked him up. What we are going to do now though, is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him, up close and personal. Now I totally understand if this figure isn't for you. The number one complaint that people had was, well, he's far too clean. And yes, I can see that. There isn't a single battle damage mark, there's no weathering, he looks brand new. Now, when you compare him to the Hot Toys Snowtrooper, yes, there is a clear and very stark difference. One is pristine, one is super weathered. Being the crazy diehard trooper collector that I am, I had to find some way of justifying my purchasing decision. And the reason I came up with was, why would he be weathered? He's been sitting in the cockpit of the AT-80 anyway, and when they're not on an icy planet, this guy would just be a standard Stormtrooper commander. Therefore, this armor wouldn't be worn very often, hence why it looks brand new. Now, starting off with the helmet, it is slightly different to the Hot Toys Snowtrooper. It does have a rubbery style shroud instead of the full fabric, and you do have some silver little pieces on the outside. He also has shoulder pads that have been flipped the other way around. I don't know if that's film accurate, I will have to do some research to see if it's supposed to be that way. He also doesn't have a backpack. There's just this little connection panel where if he was a standard snowtrooper, you'd be able to attach the backpack. Some little gold details down below, that looks great. He also has his rank badge and a couple of other little sections that have been picked out in paint. And then this little armor plate, which can be moved up and down, and it is separate, so hopefully you can get a little bit more range of motion. He also, as you saw in the accessory segment, has this little communicator on one side, whereas the other is just the fully sculpted glove. You do have a holster for the DL-44. It is done in a white pleather, so I am worried it will deteriorate over time, but for now it seems to be fairly sturdy. Now, coming down to the legs, you don't have any knee pads. It's just some straight white pants, but the best part about this, I guess, is he is unpadded. That means you should be able to go crazy with your posing, and you don't have any rubbery plastics, so no worries about creasing or damage over time. His outer robes are a very soft, supple, suede-feeling material. It looks and feels great. Then, coming down to the boots, these are the second biggest area of complaint. People really didn't like the big moon boots. They are a little bit more weathered compared to the rest of the outfit, so they look just fine. However, it's the function that people didn't like. They're one fixed solid piece. That means they are a little bit hard to use in terms of getting him standing up and down, because you have no articulation whatsoever. This could have very easily been a split-cut design, there is literally a line right there, but unfortunately they decided not to do that. Either way, yeah, so far I'm pretty happy with my purchasing decisions. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Snowtrooper Commander and the regular Snowtrooper. And as you can see, there are a ton of similarities, but also a ton of differences. The armor looks eerily similar between the two, but one is super weathered and one is super clean. The shape is also slightly different between the both of them. You have the Snowtrooper Commander absolutely towering over the grunt, and that's because of the choice of body and the super chonky soled moon boots. I like that he's a little bit taller, makes him even more imposing in the display. And then we get to the color scheme. The regular trooper 
is a little bit more yellowish white, whereas the Commander is brand new pristine bright white. Now it's going to be up to you to pick your favourite between the two, but I am struggling. I'm liking them both pretty evenly. I know it's a bit of a cop-out answer, but I have a place in my display for both troopers. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now starting off with the helmet, there's a ball joint at the base of the head and at the base of the neck, but due to this large shroud piece, you don't get a ton of range forward and back. You do, however, get swivel and a little bit of pivot side to side. The arms will go up the full way. They will go forward and back on soft ratchets. There is a butterfly joint at the shoulder, swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow that goes well past 90, and then a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso does have multiple pieces of armour layered on top of one another, so you don't get a ton of range crunching forward and back, you do get swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, they will go out to there, Swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, but it only gets you 290. There is a ball joint inside the big rubber moon boot, but because it's one solid piece, you don't get any range of motion. Just wrapping up on the Snowtrooper Commander from Empire Strikes Back. Now going into this, I already kind of knew what to expect because this guy's no spring chicken. He's been around for a while now, a few years in fact, so all of the complaints have already come to the surface. Do they register for me? Some of them, yes, such as the boots not having a split cut design, I think they totally should have done that, and how boring the display base is, it doesn't even have a little bit of snow sprinkled on top, but other than that, I really like him. The body is sturdy enough, the joints aren't overly loose, which is a common problem with figures from this company. The paint applications, as few as there are, are very crisp and clean. And the armour itself is also very crisp and clean, which I like for the Snowtrooper Commander. He is going to work perfectly alongside my other Hot Toys Snowtroopers. Now, if he doesn't work for you because he is too clean, I totally understand, but I like having a little bit of variety in the shelf, some troopers more weathered, and some troopers more crispy. Now, as I said in the intro, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com, but I'm fairly sure it's sold out now. I've still included the link down in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. While you're down there, check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.